Please be seated. Good evening, welcome to the annual council meeting. I'd like to remind all members to stand and face me when speaking. I'd like to remind everyone that the meeting is being live streamed and recorded. Uh, before I ask Reverend Darren Barlow to lead us in prayer, I'd like to ask if members who are able to stand would wish to, to honor a minute silence for former mayor Gordon Barton. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask the Reverend Canon Darren Barlow to please lead the chamber in prayer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on this past municipal year, we give thanks for the service given by the Mayor, Councillor James Halden, by the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sue Little, and the consorts who have supported them. We pray that the insights that they have discerned during their time in office may inspire them in their continued service in the community, and that enjoyable memories may stay with them throughout their lives. We pray for our new Mayor, Councillor Sue Little, and our Deputy Mayor and their consorts who will be elected this evening. We pray that the responsibilities of office may not daunt them, but give them new opportunities to serve in representing the council in the local and wider community, and hearing the concerns of the community, bringing them to the attention of members and officers. We pray for all our councillors, especially those recently elected, as they serve representing the electorate in each ward. We pray for the new leader of the council to be elected tonight, and those who lead the opposition groups. We also pray for those to be elected or appointed to committees this evening. Give them all the discernment and dedication they need, thick but porous skins and soft and warm hearts. We also remember and hold in our prayers our MPs, Jackie Doyle Price and Stephen Metcalf. We pray for all the staff who are employed by Thurrock Council in whatever capacity from the most junior to the most senior of roles, that they may have respect, that we may have respect for them as they also work for the betterment of Thurrock. We thank you for all the contacts our council has with industry, business, commerce and education, those who provide services in our borough throughout our lives and those who come to our aid in times of emergency. Help us never take them for granted. Finally, we pray for ourselves as residents of Thurrock. Help us to take responsibility for the betterment of our own communities, remembering to put the needs of others before our own. So bless us and all within Thurrock this night and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Barlow. As I step down this evening, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank every member in the chamber for giving me the privilege of a lifetime to serve as mayor. I came to the chamber 13 years ago, and when I did, I said I wanted to make a contribution. And in that same spirit, I would like to welcome all members this evening, especially those who were recently re-elected or indeed elected for the first time from various parties. I have to say after what has been an intense period as mayor, uh, I truly do relish uh, returning to the back benches 
so I can pursue new adventures. It has been a remarkable period, punctuated by as many as four historic events that don't come typically through the average mayoralty. It's been my privilege to undertake just over 320 engagements to raise 24,500 pounds for my charities and very specially for me to welcome almost 400 guests through the Mayor's Parlour as 40 individuals from our borough and groups have taken the Mayor's role of honour, highlighting the extraordinary things done by ordinary people each and every day. I would like to thank my very hard-working deputy, Sue Little, who has undertaken her responsibilities with tremendous grace. I'd like to thank the ladies in the Member Services Office, our drivers and Reverend Barlow, and I was grateful to have time privately with them earlier to thank them. I would especially like to thank the outgoing leader, Mark Cockshall, who, despite the enormous strain on him personally, leading the authority, spent endless hours with me meeting people who had been awarded the role of honour, listening to them about what they were doing in their communities and about how the local authority could make things a little bit easier. <clears throat> Finally, what I would like to offer as a parting thought is I've had just over half of all the borough schools in the chamber as I've conducted debate competitions to get young people used to the idea of democratic engagement and I certainly thank um, Councillor Johnson for his hard work with me undertaking that. As we've had well over 300 students in here, it's been my pleasure to take them upstairs and walk them past the portraits of the 47 mayors who have come before me to show them how surprisingly diverse this office can be. A huge amount of women who have held the role, including our charter mayor, Tharak has boasted its first disabled mayor, its first Nigerian mayor, its first Hindu mayor. It's my privilege to be our first gay mayor and our youngest mayor. And I'm confident that that role will continue to become diverse as our borough is. For those students, pointing out to them that none of us in the chamber started off as anything more than they are now as students, that has been a tremendous privilege. Thank you very much for allowing me the role of a lifetime. I hope I've acquitted myself well of that task and I wish my successor all the luck in the world. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to the formal agenda. Uh, item one, apologies for absence. Councillor Jeffries. Uh, Councillor Jack Dolphin. Item two, the minutes. I move that minutes of the meeting of the 1st of March 2023 be approved as a correct record. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Redsell. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, just to say that um, one of the um, speeches I did in the chamber is not what I said. So I'd just like it re-looked at, please, and we put the proper one down. Thank you. Okay, I'm sure Democratic Services can follow that up with you after the meeting. Um, I apologise, uh, we had also had um, apologies from uh, Dr Dave Smith. Item three, to elect the Mayor for the next municipal year. May I please have a nomination for the Office of Mayor? Councillor Jeffries. Uh, Councillor Sue Little. Do I have a seconder please? Mr Mayor, great pleasure in seconding Councillor Sue Little. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Any further nominations? Well, it was a great pleasure to announce Councillor Sue Little, duly elected Mayor of Thurrock.
sorry, members, I'm a little bit slow. I think it's to do with age, etc. Um, I'd like to, first off, thank the previous... Um, it's been a, an absolute privilege to serve as Deputy Mayor under James, who has been an exemplary mayor and a great ambassador for Thurrock, whether in or out of the borough. He has to, had to deal with many notable occurrences during his mayoral year. Our Queen's death, our King's coronation, three prime ministers, a jubilee celebration, and some of the most difficult council meetings we have ever had in this borough. He has undertaken many mayoral visits, often arriving in a flurry of mayoral ro robes, hats asunder, much to the delight of many mem uh, residents. Thurrock is the place he was born and has lived all his life, and he has served as well. So thank you, James. Um, now for me. <laughs> I would like to thank all my fellow councillors who have put their trust in me as being the 49th Mayor of Thurrock. I want to be the best I possibly can and I would welcome you all to invite me into your walls to see the outstanding work you do and promote events that are dear to your hearts and residents. Every member here present this evening is here because they want to do the, their absolute best for their residents and Thurrock. So be proud they have elected you to represent them. I would like during meetings that you show respect to each other and allow each other to have a voice in the chamber and to be heard without all the mocking across the chamber. I'd also like to encourage all backbenchers to take cabinet and officers to task at the appropriate time over subjects that are close to their hearts. It's really important your voice is heard. I would like to this, you'll love this bit. I would like to insist you all show me and this chamber respect at all times in my role as mayor. If I tell you to stop talking and sit down, that's exactly what you're going to do. We are not in Parliament, so no showboating. And remember, the eyes of Thurrock are on you, and these meetings are recorded. So for your own sakes, think before you speak. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Reverend Canon Darren Barlow for agreeing to be my chaplain for my mayoral year, and also my husband Brian for being my mayoral consort, and I've managed to remember his name this year. <laughs> Finally, all the charity money I hope to raise during my memorial year will either go to adults and children's charities within the borough to help in any way it can. Thank you for making me mayor. I look forward to serving this borough well. And um, thank you again from the bottom of my heart. It's been a dream. Thank you. I would now like to start the presentations this evening. Could I ask Councillor Hayden, Halden, even I've forgotten his name, he's only been gone a minute, uh, to come forward and receive his past mayoral badge, please. While you have the opportunity, would any members like to speak? No? Oh, yes, Councillor Cockshaw. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. I'm, I'm going to have to get used to that one. Um, I'd just like to really pay thanks to the work James has done as Mayor over the past year, especially as coming into the Chamber, I really couldn't think of anyone better to go to a civic event along with. Um, remembering James when he first joined his Chamber, 
many, many years ago when I was much, much younger to think when I finally joined the chamber I can be alongside him as accompanying various civic dinners. It's unbelievable when you look back over just how much James has done in one year. Um, and I think as the borough, we really should actually thank the work and everything he did, the money he's raised, going across the county to try and show and say, look, we're, we're here, we want to get involved. He's linked in with his chain gang, as they like to call themselves, where many of them, have, some of them have managed to cling on to the reins of power, they say. But I, it's one of those things where, it, from the bottom of our hearts, James, thank you for all the work you did. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Welcome to the Chamber here. I'm sure you're going to be up to the task, but I'll save my words for you at the end of the year. James, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honour to have accompanied you on some of your very varied mayoral visits, from seeing the sea cadets and being piped aboard, to having a, a long meeting with the Chief Finance Officer of DP World. But I want to particularly thank you for taking the time to invite, as you said earlier, more than half of our schools into your parlour and the chamber since it's been open. Visits that I must say have seen many a young character stealing the show <laughs> during some very, very debates such as alien rule or whether or not democracy was the right way to go. And your look of dis disbelief when one young student in the parlour asked if he could have a cappuccino. <laughs> You've raised the profile of this role, James, and have set the bar extremely high. And in doing so, you've also raised the profile of Thurrock in what has been a very difficult period. The number of visits you undertook as mayor is breathtaking, although it did seem to confuse one gentleman who asked me if you had a twin, as he was convinced you were in two places at once. You can certainly look back with pride, and you re really deserve a rest. Yet somehow, I'm not sure that's going to happen. But thank you, James. It's been a pleasure. Councillor Redsell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, James, I know you keep calling me old, but um, that's how it goes, isn't it? Um, thanks for all. I just wanted to thank you. Get on the back of barriers that you, what you've done for the schools and done a couple with you in here in your role of honour. And I hope the new mayor is going to carry on with that role of honour because that's so good for all our residents that have done, you know, their part in the borough. So it's, you want to be great, you know, really pleased with what you've done. You've done a really good job. I know you don't, it's not hard to give that badge away, isn't it? I told you it was mine. <laughs> it's hard to, to take it off and, and finish. It's um, to give it to someone else to do. But you've done great work, James. So just keep on doing what you're doing. And thank you for what you've done. Thank you very much. Councillor Gary Byrne, please. James, Thurrock's youngest mayor, Thurrock's first gay and proud mayor. You ticked all the boxes coming in and you didn't disappoint. You continued ticking the boxes all the way throughout the year. So thank you, James, for your hard work. And now more than ever, we need you in chamber to um, kick some bottoms. Keep going, mate. Councillor Neil Spate. Thank you, and congratulations, Madam Mayor. Um, as one of the many people to be honoured by Councillor Holden with the presentation of a certificate for being on the Roll of Honour, I feel it pertinent to pay tribute to James's work as Mayor. When he took office, I remember James saying something along the lines of, let the show commence, and what a show it has been. I have observed at relatively close quarters 17 different mayors since arriving in Thurrock. Each has brought a touch of their own personality to the office, and in James's case, it has been to bring a real sense of community engagement. He hasn't just sat back and waited for the invitations to come in. He has taken the mayor's office to the people of Thurrock. He is clearly proud to be a civic leader, which is why I very much hope on his return to the chamber, he is able to take on a front bench role and bring that sense of community engagement a sense of duty, a sense of humanity, honour and pride back to the ruling group. They are qualities that have been so sadly lacking over the last couple of years of this cabal of uncontrite conservatives 
have led us to the current catastrophe. Good luck, James. Um, I'm not very happy with you saying that. It's, this is supposed to be congratulatory. Not, no, not at the end, it wasn't. <laughs> Councillor Deborah Arnold. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I just wanted to say a personal thanks to James for his, his dedication and his passion that he always brings to what, whatever task he's asked to do. He always does it with real heart and soul and he's done that in his mayoral duties this year and I think he's raised the bar for you, uh, Madam Mayor, and I know it's a challenge that you'll, you'll take on with gusto. And um, James, all those real hot, sunny days when you were having to wear full robes, or maybe you didn't have to wear them, but you did. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did, because it raised the profile. And you were like a rock star, walking around with you and everybody taking photographs and wanting to have their photograph taken with you and engaging in what the mayor does. It was wonderful to see, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arnold. Is there anyone else like wanting to speak? Items of urgent business. One item of urgent business was requested, but following consideration, um, it has been declined, this item, it's, as it's being scheduled for discussion at June Overview and Scrutiny Committee. My next duty is to elect or to get you to elect the Deputy Mayor for the Municipal Year 2023 to 224. May I have a nomination for the election of Deputy Mayor, please? Councillor Carter. Councillor Kaiser Abbas. Do I have a seconder? Council. Councillor Bass. Okay, Councillor George Cuff. Um, so that was the second. Uh, is there any other nominations? Thank you, Councillor Kent. Councillor Steve Lydiard, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Worrell. Um, I will now move to the vote. So, all those in favour of Councillor Bass, could you all put your hands up? Can you keep them up while democratic services count them? Thank you. All those against, please. Oh, God, I was going to get you all to vote again for... <laughs> See, I was crafty there. Um, can you all now vote for Councillor Steve Lydiard, please? Keep your hands up so they can count them. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Um, councillor, I declare that Councillor Abbas duly appointed as Deputy Mayor of Farrock for the next municipal year. Thank you. So I now ask Councillor Abbas to come and take place and sign the acceptance book, please. Thank you.
welcome Councillor Bass. Um, I would now like you to tell me who is going to be your consort for the year. No, just say who they are. My wife, but unfortunately she's not here. She's on holidays. Lucky lady. Thank you. We're now going to item six. Oh, no. Actually, I'm supposed to have missed that bit, didn't I? Deputy Mayor, would you like this opportunity to say a few words? Just a few. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening. First and foremost, uh, I want to thank Councillor Holden and Councillor Little for their exemplary services as a mayor, as a deputy mayor. I'm very grateful to my group for nominating me for this prestigious honor, and I want to thank my party and to you all for electing me to this post. Today, I'm here because of my parents, family members, friends, and residents of Farak, and I want to thank them all for their continued support, trust, and guidance. This evening, three outstanding women are here to represent my family. Dina, a Bosnian genocide survivor and a volunteer. Lynn, my ward resident and a lifelong volunteer. And Jyoti, founder of local Tamil school, language school. These women have set practical examples that whatever the circumstances are, with commitment and willingness to do good, we can overcome difficulties and challenges and can make positive differences to people's lives. I thank them and other volunteers and community leaders for making Tharak a better place for all of us to live and cherish. As a deputy mayor, I will assist and support our mayor. I will serve Tharak residents and represent Tharak with the best of my abilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Right, we're now going to move to item six. Have we got any declarations of interest? No? Uh, to neglect now the council, the leader of the council for a four year term of office. May I have any nomination for the election of council leader, please? Councillor Arnold. Thank you. Have I got a seconder for Councillor? Yeah, I propose uh, Councillor Andrew Jeffries. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? No. So I can miss that bit. Are all them? Are all members in agreement that Councillor Jeffries be appointed as leader of the council? So I will now move to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Jeffries? Can you keep your hands up so they can count? Yes. All those against? Thank you. I now announce that Councillor Jeffries is now the leader of the council for the next four years. Thank you. I am pleased to invite Councillor Jeffries to make a speech his first speech as leader of this council. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, colleagues, for electing me as leader of the council. It's truly a great honour and a privilege to be given this position. When I first moved to Thurrock some 20-odd years ago, I never thought for one moment that I would one day be leading the council. If members would just indulge me for a moment, I'd like to say hello to my family, who cannot be here tonight, but are watching online. Hi, Mum. <laughs> for those that do not know, my partner Daryl is in the public gallery, and I'd like to thank him for all of his support. And as we all know in this chamber, it's impossible to do the job of a councillor, let alone leader, without the support of your family and your friends. I'd firstly like to start uh, to thank my predecessor, Mark Cockshaw, 
who just under eight months ago took on the leadership when this council probably faced its bleakest time. His hard work and determination to put right the mistakes of previous administrations has ensured that we have a plan to restore the fortunes of this council. So thank you, Mark. Yeah. I'd like to welcome all new, newly elected uh, councillors, those that are both returning and those that have been elected for the first time. Congratulations on being elected. And just, just so you know, my door is always open should you want to speak. Um, James Heldon, you probably wondered why I didn't stand up and speak earlier on when we were thanking you. That's because my speech would have been even smaller uh, than it is if I'd have taken this chunk out. So I would like to personally thank Councillor Holden for his superb year as the 48th Mayor of Thurrock. Whilst we had the sad death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, which you handled with great respect and dignity that it so justly deserved, you, James, have brought to the office of Mayor a pomp, and I mean that in the nicest way, that has restored the status in the eyes of the public and businesses in the borough. So thank you, James. Good luck to the new incoming mayor, Councillor Little, Little, who I'm sure will do the role with the same, if not better, pomp and circumstance. I truly see this as an opportunity to put in place changes to ensure that Thurrock Council gets back onto a sound financial footing, providing the services that Thurrock residents need and deserve. However, this will require all 49 councillors working together so I am pleased that the Leader of the Opposition and his group have taken up my invitation and later, with this Chamber's approval, to take three of the ONS chairs. These chairs are vital to restoring good governance to the Council and I welcome the opportunity for ONSs to challenge and scrutinise my administration. We all have a common aim and that is to improve the lives of our residents regardless if they voted or who they voted for. Finally, I'd just like to say yesterday I met with the fostering team and I took the opportunity to volunteer each and every one of you, so I hope you don't mind, but for a project that they're doing. They want to deliver leaflets to all our residents looking for potential foster carers. Now I know we've all just spent the last three months delivering leaflets, but if I could ask when you receive that email, if you could just help them deliver just a couple of streets within your ward, they really would appreciate it. So once again, thank you. Thank you for putting your trust in me, or some of you putting your trust in me, to be leader. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jeffries, and I look forward to working with you closely, as I do with the leader of the opposition and the independents and the independent independents up at the back. Thank you. Um, now for item eight, I have nothing. Ah, oh, Councillor Kent. Sorry. Madam Mad Mayor, I'm, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it uh, in, in due course. I hope to. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. Welcome to the chair. Welcome to the role of first citizen of, of our fantastic borough. It's genuinely well deserved. And on this side, uh, we welcome you and congratulate you wholeheartedly. We, we also you. congratulate Councillor Jeffries on taking over what, what he knows and we all know is pretty much a, a poison chalice. I just want to say uh, a few words about James, uh, our outgoing mayor, and, and, and much of it has been said. But the one thing for me that James brought to the role was an almost childlike enthusiasm and a real pride. And I think we were all a little bit shocked when kind of almost the day after being elected, James was walking through the town centre with the chains of office on and really thought nothing of it. You know, I have to say on this side, we were kind of taking bets pretty early on as to whether James slept in the robes and whether he, uh, <laughs> whether he took the chains off when he went to bed or got in the bath. Uh, if, 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 we, if we could have an answer to that one, there, there are some of us that, that stand to win some, some money. <laughs> but, but, but James, thank you for your year of service. As it's been said, it's been a pretty uh, monumental year. You've had some really difficult things to deal with, the death of a monarch, uh, the, the bringing on of a, of a new monarch, and you've dealt with those things with uh, an incredible dignity uh, that has done the borough proud. Uh, whatever it is you choose to do next, and I haven't looked through the booklet, so I don't know what it is, I genuinely uh, wish you success. And as Councillor Spate, who ever thought we'd be saying that, said, you have brought a humanity 
and an outward focus to the mayoralty. And I hope that you continue to do that and to temper not only your own side, uh, but all of us. So James, thank you for your year of service. Thank you, Councillor Kent. That was really lovely, particularly the bit about me rather than James. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting it back to me because that meant a lot. Thank you. Um, item eight. Uh, I don't have any announcements to make, so does the leader of the council have any announcements he would like to make? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to announce to council um, my cabinet. Um, Myself as leader, I'll be taking environment and economic development as a portfolio. My deputy, um, Deb Arnold, will take comms, transformation and governance. Councillor Snell will take finance, HR and payroll. Councillor Barry Johnson, children's services and housing. Councillor Maney, regen and highways. Councillor Carter, education. And Councillor George Cockshaw, health, adult health and communities. Thank you, Leader. Is there any other one who'd like to speak? Councillor Kent? No? No other announcements. Thank you. Independence up the back. Do you want to say anything? No. Thank you. Right. We're now up to item nine, report on the update of from Best Value Commissions on the appointment of the Head of Paid Services. Thank you. What page number is that? The report has been emailed to members and has been tabled this evening. Can I ask the leader to introduce the report, please? And I'm going to allow you five minutes, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You'll be pleased to know I won't be speaking for five minutes. Um, it gives me pleasure to uh, uh, table this report, and as is legally required, um, we need to appoint a head of paid services. So I'm, I'm more than happy to recommend Dr. Dave Smith. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Kent. So, Madam, Madam Mayor, what we're asked to do this evening is to note and endorse the decision taken by the commissioners, taken by Essex County Council, to appoint Dr. Smith as head of paid service. Uh, the, the, the leader su suggests that he is putting Dr. Smith forward. He isn't. That's a decision that has been taken out of our hands. So this evening, the Labour group will not be uh, agreeing to this item. And I have to say, from the outset, this isn't about the individual. This isn't about Dr. Smith. Uh, all of my dealings with him so far have been pretty much positive. It's not about the individual, it's about the principle that as an upper tier authority, we should be able to appoint our own officers. We should be able to appoint our own head of paid service. The fact that we didn't have a choice, the fact that we couldn't even have uh, a, a confirmatory interview is just a symbol of how low this authority has sunk. Uh, we are frankly now a vassal state with another authority appointing our officers. Uh, given that, we'd be happy to note it. That's a statement of fact, uh, but we will not be happy to endorse. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would any other member like to speak on this report? Councillor Spate. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. I find myself on the horns of a dilemma. I've always argued that the salary of the chief should not matter as long as they bring value to the role. I don't care if it costs a quarter of a million pounds or half a million pounds, as long as they tackle a job in front of them and make a difference. To be fair, the last incumbent did make a difference. She was the lead lemming as the council plunged off a cliff. It will not be any surprise to say I am glad she's gone. The state that the council is in, it's known for its secrecy and its contempt for democracy, stands before us this evening. My deep concern now, and this is not personal to Dr. Smith, is that we are in for much of the same. The council is effectively managed by a group of officers from Essex County Council who have been handpicked by the government as its saviours. But may I remind this chamber that some of the follies 
of Essex County Council in recent times. Its leader was convicted of fraud and even jailed, but had the temerity to claim his innocence when it was proven beyond all doubt he was a crook and a charlatan. A former chief executive declined to pursue him for the tens of thousands of pounds that went missing on a council credit card. Defenders of the faith may say that was in the past and there is a new broom at the top of Essex now. Well, it may be that Mr Jones and his colleagues have a grip on the council credit cards, but they have shown a lack of due diligence That's in other councillor matters. Councillor Spate, can, I just, no, can you just listen to me first? I actually wanted a comment on the report. I did not want I am to... I going to comment. I did, councillor, I'm speaking. I did not want to diatribe. Okay? Just stick to the point, please. Thank you. No showboating. You'll get used to it. I don't think I will, Councillor Spade, anyway. because I would stop the meeting and I'd have you removed. I am not an easy touch, so don't think I am. Thank you. If I may continue. Uh, I was making reference to the lack of due diligence and management of waste, a subject dear to Thurrock Hearts. So much so that Essex commissioned a multi-million pound recycling facility to build that was not fit for purpose and designed on the back of a fag packet, the judge's words. To be fair, the council won a legal Councillor battle. Councillor Spate, you but are I reporting? have a point to make, Madam no. Mayor. No, well, can you get to the I point? I was going to get to it. If I had two well, minutes and actually, you had to stop me, next I'd time, be finished. No, Councillor Spate, next time, let's get to the point first rather than the story. I think we all know the story. What I do need you to do is comment on the report. I Thank have a you. point to make, Madam Mayor. I'll make it quick. Right, as I was going to say, does that not sound familiar? So I'm sceptical about the government's choice of commissioners and it follows that I am sceptical over its choice of CEO. One good thing is that Dr Smith will, having worked in my hometown of Doncaster, significant knowledge of a history of poor governance. Doncaster, ironically home of the crapper, which was a flushing toilet, found itself labelled as the 21st century epitome of a rotten borough. A commentator on Doncaster said... I'm getting the history again, Councillor Spade. Yeah, no, listen to seconds. me. Oh, hang on, I'm speaking. Seconds. No. Can you just listen? I do not want to hear about toilets in Doncaster. That has nothing to do with the report tonight. Is it? What paragraph is a toilet and a crapper got to left, do? Madam no. I'm going to ask you to sit if you don't hurry up and just speak on the report, please. I believe I was speaking on the report. A commentator. Uh, there's nothing about toilets in the anyway, report. Dr. Smith, as if you'd let me finish, Dr. Smith helped pick up the pieces, and Doncaster is now, seven years after he took office, a much better place. So is Dr. Smith a good or a bad choice? I very much hope he is. But the honest answer is I don't know, nor do I know who or what was an alternative. Secrecy has once more reigned. So because of that, I cannot in all conscience support or vote for Dr. Smith, but I wish him well. Thank you, Councillor Spate. But, I, you know, this is my first meeting, and I don't want to begin crossing swords with councillors. Is there any other member would like to speak on this item? Councillor Bryan? Burns, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Gary, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I've met the new boss, and... Leon, you're listening? I've met the new boss, and I was impressed. I've met the new MO, and I've been impressed. And I thought things were going to change, but... Uh, last week's food caddy meeting, we were told leaflets were already printed. Date set in stone. Council's given no say. Being told this is happening, get on with it. Being told I don't live in Thurrock, so I don't know. They take the salary, it's their job to let me know. We're not here to be 49 nodding dogs to officers. We're here to represent and challenge. After last week's bin fiasco telling us we have no say, I'm worried now. Councillor Allen, thank you. And I, actually, I think you were before, Councillor Brian, so I'm sorry about that. That's OK, no Madam Mayor, and welcome as, as uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, we, we received apologies for absence earlier, and uh, I do believe that uh, one of those absence, uh, ab absentees is Dr. David Smith himself. Uh, 
we've, we've not had a, a, a reason given why he's not here tonight, but uh, we're being asked to elect him as, as chief executive in his absence. Is that correct? It is, um, but unfortunately, um, as things go, he had had a holiday book for many, many months. So, uh, and I do agree with you, he should be here. I'd rather see the whites of people's eyes. So I know what you feel, but that the report is as it is. And if you can just talk about that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, as his absence is due to his holidays and he, he didn't see fit to be here, I know you said that it's... Uh, it was probably booked well in advance, but as he's not here tonight, I can't elect him uh, as chief executive, so I'll be uh, abstaining on, on, that, uh, on that decision. Thank you. Right, would the leader like to sum up now? Councillor Andrews. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I don't think I can really add, add, add anything um, further to what's already been said. Um, we need a head of paid services. Dr. Smith, I believe, is a capable um, chief executive, as some people have already said. Um, and I, th I think we just need to get on with it and, and get things moving. So, members, do we agree with the recommendations in the report and endorse the, the uh, decision? So, would you like to take a vote? Those in favour, please. Hands up. Sorry, those against. Thank you. As you probably realise, it is actually um, agreed and we now have appointed Dr. Dave Smith as Head of Paid Surface. Report on, on the appointment of the Statutory Scrutiny Officer, Electoral Registration Officer and the Returning Officer. The report can be found on page 51 to 56 of the agenda. Would the leader please like to introduce the report for me. Thank you. I'm allowing you five minutes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I won't speak for long. The report's there, and I think it speaks for itself, so I recommend adoption. Thank you, Councillor Jeffries. Uh, Councillor Clement, would you like to say anything? Yeah, Madam Mayor, we will be uh, supporting the three recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Uh, the independence and the independent independent yes thank you would any mem members like to speak on the report no brilliant thank you would the leader like to sum up then no okay Right, do members approve recommendations 1.1 to 1.3 as written on page 51 of the agenda? Agreed. Thank you, councillors. Um, item 11, report on the establishment and the composition of the council's committees, panels and boards. I would like to inform members that the nominations of the group leaders and ungrouped members to committees, chair and vice positions have been received. The nominations to the committees can be found on pages 3 to 12 in your booklet tabled in front of you. Have you all found it? You've all got it. You've all read it. Brilliant. The nominations for the chairs and vice chairs of the committees can be found on page 13 to 14 in this tabled booklet. Would the leader, Councillor Jeffries, please like to introduce this report? Thank you. Which Thank is found on 57 to 70. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I've just got um, one slight adjustment to the paper that councillors have got in front of them, and that is on the licensing committee. I'd like the following substitutes, Councillor Duffin, Councillor Abbas, and Councillor Arnold, but the rest is as of the report. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kent, would you like to say anything? 
Would the independent independents like to say anything? No. I think we're going to have to be able to... Uh, that doesn't flow very well, does it? I'm going to have to get into a better way of what to call everyone. Thank you. Would any member like to speak on this report? No? No. Would the leader like to sum up? No, thank God. Right. I would like to, de like to deal with a vote on this item as follows. Firstly, I will take a vote on recommendations 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 and 1.5 on block. Are members in agreement? Yes? Agreed. Are members in agreement with recommendations? Oh, I've done that bit because they've managed to waste a bit of paper and print it twice. Sorry. Sorry? I will now move to recommendation 1.6 on page 58 as there are no contested nominations for the chairs or the vice chairs positions on committees. Do members agree with the nominations to chair and vice chair appointments as detailed on pages 13 to 14 of the tabled booklet? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you, councillors. <laughs> Item number 12. Oh, hang on, councillor Brian. Can I Gary. just... Can I just check on... Oh, exactly. Hi. I'm sorry I haven't got my glasses on. Right and I, again, you yeah. look so wonderful Am up I, there. I thought, yeah. I Brilliant. Thank, thank you, um, Councillor. Just on page five, my friend here is on the committee and is also a sub. So, how does he do that? Is he like. Very popular. Very popular. Hang on a minute. We'll just get the monitoring officer to check. Thank you. Thank you. Did you say number five? Page five, on um, Corporate Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Overview and Scrutiny. No. no. Oh, sorry. Apparently we're removing you from the substitutes, so you are it rather than a substitute. Thank you. Um, Item 12, report on the appointments to outside bodies, statutory and other panels. The nominations of the political groups and ungrouped members are set out on pages 15 to 23 of the booklet that has been tabled again in front of you this evening. Would the leader like to introduce the report, which can be found on pages 71 to 74 of the agenda? Thank you, Councillor Jeffries. Sorry, Madam Mayor. Um, there, is, there is a couple of um, uh, changes. Um, the strategic advisory panel, I'd like to p add a substitute of Councillor Duffin. Um, the West Tilbury um, comms uh, conservators uh, uh, nominate Councillor Sue Sammons. Um, Impulse Leisure, um, I'd like to nominate um, Councillor uh, James Tandy. And on the East Tilbury community, I'd like to withdraw Councillor Piccolo's nomination, please. Thank you, Councillor Jeffries. Councillor Kent, would you like to say anything? No, that's lovely. Would the independent, no, brilliant. Would any other member like to speak on this report? No, thank you. Would the leader like to sum up? No.
there is one contested appointment to the following outside body, and it's the East Thurrock Community Association, in accordance with the Council's procedure, Rule 20.9, we will take a vote on this contested nomination. All in favour of Councillor John Cecil? And all those in favour of council are spate. Put your hand up, Quasar. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Spate. Spate. Spate, I'm pleased to tell you that you are now on that committee. Thank you. Or outside body. Um, there, are na there are a number of other vacant positions on outside bodies as noted in the booklet. Does any member wish to nominate to any of these vacant positions? These are within your community so it is quite good to perhaps put yourselves forward. No, okay. Are members in agreement with any uncontested nominations? No. So, the report on item 13, the schedule of meetings. The report can be found on pages 74. Ah. Councillor Massey. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It was just to nominate myself for the Lower Thames Crossing Task Force. Can you repeat that, please, Councillor Massey? Yes, sorry, Madam Mayor. It was just to nominate myself for the Lower Thames Crossing Task Force Group. Brilliant. Thank you. Are we all in favour of that? Yes, I think we are. Yeah. Is there anyone else liking to speak? No. Right. Item 13, reports on schedules of meetings. The report can be found on pages 75 to 90. And would the leader like to introduce the report? Thank you, Madam Mayor. As you say, the report can be found on pages 75 to 90 of the agenda. Councillor Kent, would you like to say something? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, uh, Madam Mayor, you alluded earlier to an item of urgent business that was requested. That was an item of urgent business that I requested, and it was to get a statement on the chaos, chaos uh, that's engulfed us with the brown bins. The, the reason that I wanted to bring uh, that as a matter of urgency here tonight is the fact that we don't have a council meeting where we can discuss business for four months. I think that is far too long, so I'd like to move an amendment this evening uh, which would return us to our previous practice of having a council meeting in March on the last Wednesday before the pre-election period kicks in. Uh, so if I can have a seconder, Madam Mayor, I, I will move that amendment. Um, Councillor, yes. Um, March, though, we are now in May. Oh, next March. Are we going to? Are we going to wait to discuss the bins till March next year? Sorry, Ma Madam Mayor. I'm, I'm no, just on. making the point, Madam Mayor, that this year it was the bins. Yes. There are important things that happen, and exactly. I believe that a period of four months where we don't come together to discuss them is too long. Relatively recently, we used to have a meeting in March on the last Wednesday before the pre-election period. Okay, that's agreed. So thank you very much for pointing that out, Councillor. Um, would any other member like to speak on the report? No. Would the leader like to sum up? No. Do members approve the recommendations in report to approve the calendar of the meetings and to note the need to convene additional meetings, additional meetings as and when to comply with government directions and improvement activities and to agree with what Councillor Kent has said about returning the meeting in March. Do we all agree? Yes. Thank you. Agree to the back, yes. 
Item 14, schedule of elections and order of retirement of councillors. The report can be found on pages 91 to 96. Would the leader like to introduce the report? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as it states, the um, report can be found on pages 91 to 96 of the agenda, and I recommend adoption. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Kent, would you like to say anything? Madam Mayor, the only thing that I would add is that I hope uh, that that calendar of retirements is superseded by all-out elections uh, next year. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Uh, the independence, independence, you don't want to say anything? Right, thank you. Sorry, Councillor Jeffries, when I'm trying to talk, I can't hear when you're talking across the chamber. Sorry, I'm a bit deaf. Um, would any other member, no, we've done that. You don't want to speak about it, so that's wonderful. Um, would the leader like to sum up? No. Uh, do members agree with the recommendations for the elections? Yes, you all agree. Anyone disagree? No. Wonderful. Um, so, we've now come to the close of the meeting. So, members, would you like to stand for the formal close of the meeting? Members and guests present are welcome to join us for refreshments. Oh, hang on. Excuse me, Councillor Spate, there is no point of order. Councillor Spate, I hope you're not wasting our time, so, okay. Up you stand, thank you. Very quickly, at the beginning of the meeting, um, there was the roll of honour um, for the war, which normally would be read out. Uh, I imagine we didn't read it out because of the pressures of time. I just wanted to make sure that it would be recorded in the minutes that we give due honour to those men of Thurrock who died. Thank you. I've totally noted that, Councillor Spate. That's, that was a very good comment of yours. And actually, I think it actually um, would have applied to the last mayor. But um, due to pressures, I think we... <laughs> he forgot. Right, so at uh, the close of the meeting, and as I said, I would like every member to come down and all the guests and everyone, all everyone, come and have a drink and have some refreshments and let's all talk and be friendly and close of the meeting. Thank you very much for, for you for attending. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>